Nina, congratulations on your OBE. Thank you very much. You received on Saturday. I did. Oh, <laughs> you really deserve it. Well, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> and thank you very much for showing us your garden. You've got two beautiful little spaces in London. This is little, I think. We're, we're, I mean, this is a little, really little. The other one's less little, which is quite good. But what I think it shows, anyone who's got a little garden, is your attention to detail. Yeah. And, and first of all, that lovely magnolia that is wonderful i mean having that whole umbrella really is fantastic mm. and so this is this becomes a rather cozy it's very nice at night as well yeah and I, I do have an awning which comes down so if i give a dinner i can have um really people sit out here or come out here and smokers can come out here if they're on it mm. and um and then it's lit and it's really quite a nice extension it just makes this room bigger mm. And you've got heaters yeah, underneath your awning, so it's warm, yeah. it's yeah. dry, it's wonderful, fresh air. Sometimes I put a big rug down mm. so, and just make it really like an extension of the room. Yes. No, it feels beautiful. And I think probably the, the most effective thing is this sort of louvered fence that you've got all the way around, which is in... An off-white, which is called Rita's... It's called Rita Says. Rita Says. Paint library, and it's just a lovely sort of almost grey-white. Yes. As you say, it has that slightly lavender yeah. to it. So it's, it's a warm white, in a yes. way, isn't it, wouldn't you say? And also it's not so harsh. Well, it's not so harsh. Yeah. Yes. Takes the, the crispness off it, in a way. Um, and I think I'll copy this fence in detail because I like the fact that it's slightly see-through. Yes, and air comes through it. Air comes through it. It filters the wind so it doesn't have to be so solid as a solid yeah, fence exactly. which takes much so more force see, from the wind. It is hot. You get a little breeze through it, which is nice. Yeah. The flowers seem to like it. And then whatever you've got behind looks interesting and doesn't look yeah. awful, even if it was awful, but it's not. Um, and you've kept your palette very defined, haven't you? You've got lovely trackless vermin, white pelagoniums, ferns, camellias, hydrangeas, begonia, azaleas, dianthus. A lovely gift from you. Yes. I love that colour. I like it as a sort of accent colour. And it, the, I, I potted one up for my garden. I, I think they're a great cut flower as well, but I had them in my cutting garden. And they... They're a short-lived perennial, but I've had mine for maybe six, seven years, and they just spread and seed Lovely. and spread, yeah, and they keep nice true. Big pot. And when you cut them, they live forever in water. So um, also the grills, it's, it's the, the grills, details. Yeah. When I came to this house, there was no basement, so there wasn't really room enough for me. Yeah. So I dug, two, two, uh, I dug an entire basement, and so the, the room underneath my sitting room is a sort of TV room um, with um, a, a sort of day bed in it with another one underneath so my grandchildren can come and stay from the country. A laundry room, but so this has got a great big sliding window and the air, there's a hell of a lot of air goes through this actually, funny enough. Yes. Because of my little four-legged treasures, I sent the man the, the paw print so that they can walk on here without, um, without getting their little feet stuck. And you had it custom made for this yeah. space and you've got the same floor level Going I in a no threshold a step, no threshold. yes. And that does make a huge difference, yeah. doesn't it, in a space? Well, this garden, when I came here, had two levels. I mean, you know, it was ridiculous. It was completely pointless. Mm. And the window wasn't quite as wide. And, um, and then I got this stone put down, and then I sprayed that the same colour as the stone. So it's sort of... Oh, I and see. And it's all really meant to be the same colour as the wood. I mean, it's sort of... I didn't no break in colour. Realise that. So you've actually sprayed it the same colour, which would just be a sort of metal paint. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's quite clever, isn't it? As is the thin planters, these very thin planters with irrigation, obviously, but they support quite a lot of growth. Yes, they and do. they yeah. stop the space being yeah. too constricted. And then you've added terracotta and this. Where did you find this? This I found in, at, at, um, in Morocco, in Marrakesh, mm. um, at Mr. Blowy. I'm sure it was made in Yorkshire or somewhere. <laughs> but anyway, the point is, I saw it there, yes. dragged it back here again. Mm. Um, and I think it's nice because you can just put pots in different pots, you know, at Christmas. I mean, you know, that one can throw colour in mm. if necessary or not. Mm. No, it's lovely. I think it looks really lovely. And your mirror, what I think is quite clever is it, it's not too spanking yes, yes. shiny. Well, it's sort of, when the lights go on, it sort of reflects all of them. And you yes. Vaguely, it, it, it came and then it peeled away, so I just whacked another mirror on the back. So that's two levels of 
disintegrating mirror. And it is glass, it's not acrylic. It's glass. It's glass, yeah. yes, because normally you use acrylic mirror at Yes, I did use it in the other garden, yeah. acrylic mirror, because it was the lightness, but this had glass in it, and then I just put another. Anyway, it seemed to be perfectly happy. And your garden furniture, tell me about well, these. This garden furniture is jolly comfortable, I must say, but I will get, I mean, when the English summer decides to arrive, I will get um, cushions. Yeah. But, um, I think it's quite nice that you don't have to put one more thing away at night. Mm. You don't ever use waterproof cushions? That... Oh, yes. It's yeah. But still, you know, it's, they can, do get wet. I mean, if there's a huge rainstorm, I mean, they, they get... And I've got that inside, which the water goes through, but yeah. it's damp. Yeah. But they come from Summit. Oh. We do, we do a line of um, outdoor fabrics with Summit. Oh, so, I see. And they make furniture too. They do wonderful furniture. It's, I mean, it's absolutely. I mean, this is their only adventure. I think into metal furniture, but they do wood furniture, which lasts. I mean, it's guaranteed for life. They. Is it a coir then? What is it? It's, um, it's made in. A, 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 the wood comes from Indonesia, I think. Right. So it's um, southern hardwood, it, probably. Yes. yes. And, and they will. Rest, I mean, if, you, if something goes wrong with it twenty years later, they restore it for you. Really? And some it do wholesale and retail, or just wholesale? I, I, well, I, I, I think they have both prices. Mm. Yeah. Oh, right. And your little owls, my little owls your champagne my glass. Little, well, it's just nice to read the paper here and have some, somewhere to put drink. Mm. Yeah, no, it's, it's a really sweet little space, I think. Absolutely charming. It's sort of sheltered and, you know. Mm. Yeah, yeah, lovely. Should really we go sort of have a look at your other one now? Um, so is this south facing um yes so that's why it's very so hot this side gets the sun beats down on that wall really particularly right i see and what's nice now i mean we've come out a bit later but the the, 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 the scent from this track is very really quite heady isn't it oh it's yeah, amazing it just fills the space doesn't it it's I really it's lovely a good place to have a coffee in the morning or a drink in the evening yes i think lunchtime if it was really summer would be too hot so let's just run through what you've done, really. So first of all, you've used the same yes, paving, paving and, uh, and sprayed the grill, and then we've got the light going through to the basement. And then you've, with your paving, you've well, reduced the width yes. of your bands. Now that I would never have done, but I've got this wonderful friend in Australia called Paul Bangay, who's the most brilliant garden designer. Yes. And he told me to do this with it, so that it, you know, if, and actually, if you look at this end, you sort of, it goes away. I mean, it's very architectural. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't realise that they're getting narrower. You just think the garden's sort of going on forever. Right. Now, that is clever. And this pebble, so you've done pebble on edge in mortar. Yes. Yeah. And they hand do this. you handed these. Yes. They didn't come in panels. No. Yeah. But that, that sort of gives an extra something. To you love stripes, don't yeah, you, in your fabrics? Stripes, yes. And so yeah. did the inspiration for the stripes come from you? Yeah, I'm afraid it came entirely from Paul. I uh, right. dared open my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> But I thought it was such a lovely idea, and then more of those uh, capital pots that are thin. The thin I planters. Afford to lose any space in this garden. And so those are probably two hundred mil wide, yes. barely, and they're fiberglass. Yes, and they're fiberglass, so they're not heavy. And again, they're in the same white, off-white yeah. readers. Yeah, they're all painted the same colour. Same colour. Yeah, because then says. I think they disappear. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then what I think is probably the trickiest bit of it all is the way you've got your mirror at the very, very end with the railing in front. Yeah. So it does look as though it goes on. And then behind the curtain of trackless berm and jasmine orders on the left, you've got a door into the street. Yeah, well, so the dustbins can go in and out. The dustbins. And, and you can go in I and out or you'd never... Yes, yes, yeah. And then also, and if I give a dinner here, yes. I think it's... Because I hope this cook, so the most lovely Kate comes and cooks. And I just think it's horrible to walk through a drawing room because this is really one open room yes you have to walk through the drawing room with all the people sitting after dinner to get out with your snow boots on and all your food you know i mean it's just not i just don't think i wouldn't feel comfortable yeah but she get, goes out there with her key and out she goes I so it's see. much more comfortable way of entertaining know, yeah yeah and you use that in as a or do you always use the I front door the front door but i do come in there if i've lost the key or if I want to get the bins out, or yeah. the, and anyone working on the garden can come in there. So if they're muddy, mm. they don't have to think, oh, I've got to take the boots off, and you know, all those things that are boring about going through a house. But when you came here, this space was the road. 
This was actually a, a garden, but there was a low wall here with a low gate wall. in. And, right. uh, uh, you know, people used to find rather unpleasant things in this front garden. <laughs> I um, can just imagine what. Including the young sort of sitting here smoking. Really? Smoke. Yeah. But um, by putting that up, now in England you normally need planning to have a fence above uh, one metre high on the roadside, don't you? Two metres. On the roadside, yes. it's, it's normally one metre. Oh, well, they didn't. They, were, no, they didn't notice. About that. Yeah, they didn't notice. It's no, um, I mean, it's a good thing too. Yeah. yeah no, so no, no. it was all. I mean, that was all. Yeah, planned, uh, probably all part happy. of the planning yes, permission yeah. when you converted the well, building. Well, actually, fun enough, I took the building back from here because it, the building came to here. And ah. It had the dustbins here, and then it had a sort of little um, pokey front door, and I sort of thought I want to get more light into the house. Yeah. So go back. So maybe there was a trade-off. I don't know. Maybe you got that wall up that high. Yes. They were perfectly happy with the rest of it. Mm. And I said I didn't feel safe having the road. I mean, people could just come from the road into yeah. and through the window. It, it just shows you, you know, what, because this space is probably four metres wide. Yeah, probably. Maybe. And maybe 10 metres long, 11 metres long. But it just forms a perfect garden and it looks so much bigger. And if it, I can imagine it now with the street and cars and dust yes. and noise yeah, and right. chatter. And you've completely changed the whole space. Actually, I, I was very lucky. I had very good planners. And funny enough, I was going to put a much fancier front door on. Yes. And they said, no, your inner wall garden, which is that, because the wall is that, their, their garden. Um, yes. So they suggested I did the wooden um, garden, which was really much um, more, in a way, garden-like or back door-like. So it's quite hidden, the whole thing. Which I yes, realized. it's very nice. So very it's very, very nice indeed. And, and the other details that um, I think are really clever. Well, I love these big pots. These were these are from um, Brook Pottery, and, it's, and I think they're fabulous. They're just such a great shape. They look quite American to me. In fact, this whole space looks slightly American to me. Do you think? Well, I don't know. I suppose not being a gardener, not and that's why I'm quite frightened of having you here. Um, <laughs> Um, I, I haven't seen one weed uh, on well, anything that needs pruning. No, that that wouldn't happen. <laughs> the only thing I can do is dead head. Right. Um, but um, maybe it is a bit American. Maybe it's more like an exterior room. It does feel very, yeah. it does have that sort of New England feel to me yeah. somehow. I don't know why. But you, you've just, it's very restrained, isn't it, really? Because you've got these same planters going up the long thin ones one two four five of them yes. and they it brings the planting up as you said which well, i think that, is yeah. lovely to bring them up well, so those planters are this in high in a small space you need to be able to see them you don't want to start going like that to see yeah them yeah you'd have had acres of wall yeah and it makes it feel more sunken the space what is, what is interesting is that that is the kitchen window of my neighbors yes i go around there sometimes and you, when you look out she, she loves it because she sees her, she's that for high up, you see. So she's standing at that window. And so, so there's no lack of privacy, no. but she has all the benefit yeah. of your jasmine and yeah. the scent coming in. Yes. So it's so unobtrusive, isn't it, to have a window of a neighbour yes. so close yes. and not feel it being obtrusive. Exactly. That's and fantastically also, the clever. The thing is, we're, we're, all very, we're all friends around here. Just as well. So. <laughs> No air pistols through the window no, or anything. Exactly. But so, and so we've got the door to your road on the left, the and bins. on the right behind more mirrored is the bins. So you've, yeah. that's the other thing, it's cars and bins in cars English and bins, gardens. Yes. And, and you've got rid of the cars. And the, and the, all the stuff you need in a garden, I mean, not much, but it's there. It's yeah. The way. Yeah. And so you've got those beautiful Philadelphias at the end in them. the roads, which are really lovely. You've got a lovely white begonia. You've got Garyoliptica, you've got Moulinbeck here, you've got Pelagonians, sweet peas just about to come, climbing roses. You've got many plants in this tiny space. Oh, and the Ridgeron in that lovely cascade on the table. Oh, yes, those, well, that was given to me for my birthday, which I think is lovely, by a friend of mine called Minnie Montague, and she's a great gardener. And I just think that's rather nice there. It gives another dimension. With the Iridron Carvinskaynes. I, I put it on that top step. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah. No, it's absolutely charming, isn't it? Really charming. And so that, you've made a little pergola, a mini pergola over your bins and your well, outside enough, entrance. Because I wanted the bank, the banks is being cut back and it needs to be trained back down. The rows are banks here, yes. And, um, but actually, because you go up a step, you sort of needed that extra height to get the things out. Yeah. 
And that's, where did you find that little mini pergola, metal? The same man who made this. Metal work. Yeah. I do think yes. a metal worker in a garden yeah. is so useful, isn't it? Because they can do anything, any yeah. shape with metal, yeah. uh, any finish. I mean, one day I was thinking that I might put some more, but then I thought it might make this room very dark. I might have put a cover over the top here. I might. Yes. And, and then I had ideas that I might want to put a chandelier. I might spring hanging off that. Hanging from it. A hanging chandelier. Yes. That would be fun. Which could be quite fun. You could just. Re just repeat that section, yes, couldn't exactly. you? Going across, yeah. maybe one here, one in the middle, and then have three chandeliers, or would that be too much? Nothing's too much, is it? <laughs> <laughs> is that what you think? Is that your basic premise with design? Nothing is too much? Well, no, I think one has to rein oneself in sometimes, because <laughs> you know, I think sometimes you just think, whew, it's too much. But well, you're heavily reined in here, aren't you? If yes, you think about it, although, although you've got a lot in here everything is very it is coordinated yes. I know you don't like being over coordinated but this is coordinated yes. isn't and, it and actually the, the furniture which was um, so white and getting not very nice um, yes has now th th thanks to wonderful um, Tom Faulkner he's sprayed it this wonderful dark green which means that it disappears a bit more into the greenery so you don't see it so much so the space yes. I mean, I speaks have a louder. I was, you know, because I, I go to Morocco and I was thinking of that wonderful garden of Saint Laurent. I thought, what about doing it in blue or Majorelle? Oh, yeah, the Majorelle blue garden. Yes. garden. But then I thought, you know, it'll God, would you put you. that in with the green and white? Would well, you have I done? Could. I might. Really? But then I thought, actually, then I was then, then I'd only have two chairs, I think, and a sofa because otherwise it would just be too much. So there you are. I stopped and went for dark green. I, I do love that Majorelle garden, but I always remember that Alan Titchmarsh did a range of tools in that blue and range of things. And, and although it looks wonderful in the Moroccan light, yes. on a grey English day, it makes look, everything yes, look very dowdy, yes. doesn't it, beside it? I, I didn't. Mm. You, know, you might know, though, in 10 years' time, it's the sort of thing you can change it, yeah, can't course, you? And if yes. you get bored, you think, exactly. well, let's just change your, it. Yeah, get that. I mean, like, the flowers could go a completely different colour another time. Mm. And getting this height up, you know, it, like you say, in a small room. I bought in Scotland from a wonderful woman from um, Gardner, Helen Gardner in, in Scotland, in the north of Scotland. Yes. And um, in Cromarty. Yes. I thought I must be able to use these somewhere. And it would just give a bit of height. Ah, Cromart is amazing. We were yes. up there the other yes. week working in Amadine. Yeah, very extraordinary place. Yes, and having height, like in a small room, when you have a high yeah. piece of furniture, it adds scale. Sort of and makes slightly it guides you through. The mm, makes it look much bigger, doesn't it, having that lovely height. I do like this colour green, though, as well. That's a lovely yes. soft colour. The other thing I noticed, both the doors on that space and this space, are beautifully generous. Yes. And I always think when you have a door going out, all the old big houses had lovely, wide, generous doors, and it creates that nice, welcoming feel. And I think it's better than a pair of French doors. Definitely. Yeah. Much easier, isn't more it? Generous, Much more accessible yeah. and a more generous feel to it, yeah. No, I think it's completely charming. And do you do all the deadheading and things yourself? Well, it's all I can do is the deadheading. I wouldn't dare do anything else unless I killed something. So there, <laughs> so there, they, there is a, um, a lovely couple who come here yes. and, do, and tidy it up so once a month or once every two months, or depending on the season, I suppose. Mm. Um, and so that's, um, and, and they, they bring in the plants. I mean, we discuss it and they show me the pictures and I say, yes, I do like this or whatever. Mm. Mm, well, they certainly do. I'm rather looking forward to I love sweet peas. I'm rather looking forward to coming out. Yeah. Yes, really nice. And that's going to be a nice purple one, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Mine are very behind this year. The slugs mullered the first batch. Oh, really? Sadly, yes. I should mm. have been on top of my game there, but I wasn't. Just one top yeah. tip before you go. When you're doing yeah. someone's outdoor space, um, leading out from their main living room, what do you think people don't think about enough that you think you should do more of? Well, I think I, um, I've usually been very lucky, or the clients have been very lucky because they've had a garden designer. But yes. I think, I think um, not too much colour. I, I don't want a riot of colour for me. And I think you just want to enjoy the space and not, you know, have to... I, I, I'm not very good at sort of spending time looking at things and, th and all that. So I like quite a calming atmosphere once I'm outside. And, um, and then I think you want to make the furniture comfortable and so that you know everywhere you go maybe if it's an end of a long walk you might plant a bench 
you, you'll be able to live a life like in exterior rooms. I think I always think of gardens as exterior rooms. Mm. Yes. Yeah, a lot of the space we use in the garden, we use yeah. as an exterior room. And it's nice to have somewhere to sort of sit down and have a cup of coffee or have a drink and talk or read, mm. you know. And I think that's, if you've got the luxury of that, mm. Um, mm. that, that's what. I think this must be the most charming small garden I've seen. And I think you, you, it's very clever on many levels. And every time I look, I notice something different, like the little hanging light at the end there. Yeah, that came from Morocco. Everything, mm. it is <laughs> from everywhere, mm. because I only ever have time to do anything. When, when you're I'm working. Away. Yes. Yes. Yeah, because you have those odd hours before exactly. planes come yeah. and go. Uh, that's nice, though. It means you've so got very eclectic. Yes, and you bring things mm. back from, and it reminds you of trips you've been on. And there's Monsieur Blaoui in Morocco who had that light. Oh, um, really? The same guy that I bought. Um, and oh. I bought a lot of ca uh, candle holders. So sometimes if I'm giving a dinner, this whole thing will be lit with candles, which is quite fun. Mm. So you're not going to extend your range into outdoor gardening things? I don't think so. I think I'm, <laughs> my bluff might be called. I think I'll leave that to you. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Oh, well, it really is charm two charming spaces. Well, thank, thank you very you. much I indeed. Have, I am very lucky. And I think it's a, a surprise, this. That's what I quite like. People come through the front door and think they're going into a sort of hut. In fact, I've, my, some of my, I was in Greece last year, and I've, there's a wonderful ceramicist, and I just had a whole lot of plates for dinner, and mm. it just says the hut in the middle, because mm. uh, I call this house the hut, because it's quite a funny little space, really. Ah, it's beautiful little space. You've made it so charming. Well, this did work very nicely for the, we the wedding that I did, I've done for my, for my daughter, my son. And so here, yes, you had carpet on the road. Well, I put a red carpet just because it's sort of naff and expected, isn't it, to have a red carpet? On, on the, the road. Pavement, oh, yes. lovely. And then they yes. came in that door from the wedding and this was all planted and then they came through and this was all empty and then we ate down there. So it was, and it was a lovely day. And what are the, what is the most amount of people you've ever had here at a bash? Um, For your well, OBE, you'll have to have no, a big I'd, bash shortly. I might do that in the shop. <laughs> yes. yeah. But, um... My niece got married, and I said, shall I do that the afterwards? And she muttered about the family and that sort of thing. And then when I said that, don't you? I said, now, how many do you think we are? And she said, well, the awful thing is everyone said, yes, I think we're about 70. And I think we were actually about 80. But it didn't matter because um, I think this table went and did a buffet, and the rest of the furniture we got managed to get rid of. And then, again, this garden, it was June, so it was... Yeah. And you were out on the road as well? Yeah, I put all the garden furniture on the street. Gosh, um, so you had 80 people. Yeah. Fantastic. I bet young, that was so fun. Were, yes, it was great fun. Mm. Um, mm. Actually, you can squeeze quite a lot of people in. I do quite a lot of dinners, and somehow, magically, we get 20 in here. Gosh. Um, very good. Very good. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, Nina. Yeah, thank you for coming. I shall sleep well tonight, thinking <laughs> that I've had you in my garden. <laughs>